This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Okay. Okay, um, I'm going to have Shabbos, everyone. We're just uh, the Rosh Yeshiva, Chashver Abayim. And uh, now they're Rosh Yeshiva and Chashver Abayim, but they're also a uh, good Chavirim of mine. And uh, in Yeshiva, your Rosh Yeshiva and Rabbeim were people that I looked up to tremendously, and uh, it's very gratifying to see how they've uh, taken everything they've got from the Yeshiva and bringing it to Los Angeles, bringing Tyra to uh, the, other, the other end of the country. And uh, we wish all the Rabbeim and all the Tamidim great bracha v'atzlacha in all of their future endeavors. So I want to share with you an interesting question. Maybe this is not going to be the typical question that um, is asked, but I think it's worthy of our uh, consideration. There's a ton of Debe Eliyahu that we'll probably hear in Yeshiva very, very often. It's in Parak Chafei, where the ton of Debe Eliyahu says, Chayiv Adam Leimar, person is obligated to say, Masai Yagiu Masai, Lamasai Avoisai, Avraham Yitzhak V'yakov. A person is obligated to say. Now it's interesting. Sometimes the Gemara will tell us, La'olam, like it talks about being Maver Sedra, the Gemara in Bracha says, La'olam, yis, right, Yashem Adam Parshio Yisav Imatzibar. La'olam. It doesn't say you have to, it says you should always. But if you look in the Tor, the Tor says, Tzarech, you need to. If you look in the Shulchan Aruch, the Shulchan Aruch says, Chayev. So you see that there, sometimes the language could be used, La'olam, sometimes the language could be used, Tzarech, you need to, and sometimes it says you have to. So if Chazal already say you have to, it must be a real biggie, because even when Chazal just sort of suggests something, it's understood as an obligation. Chayiv Adam Loimar, a man is obligated to say, a person is obligated to say, Masai Yagiu Masai, when will my actions reach? Lamasai Avoisai, the actions of my forefathers, Avraham Yitzhak V'Yakov. You're obligated to do that. In other words, it's not recommended, it's not suggested, it's not a good thing, it's something you have to do. You have to wake up in the morning and say, I'm here, when, I, when will I reach the level of our advice? How do Chazal know that you're obligated to do that? What's the source that we're obligated? It says somewhere in the Chumash that I have to say, when will I be like Avram Yitzhak? What's, what's wrong with the way I am now? And, and I'll, I'll remain that way. Why do I need to say... When will I be like Avram Yitzhak V'yakov? Where, where does it say this? It's a chayk? It's a halach l'mayshem Misinai. That the same way God told Moshe on Har Sinai, you have to have black tefillin, so he told him, you have to say, when will I reach the level of Avram Yitzhak V'yakov? Where in the Chumash does it say that I need to do this? So I want to share with you a question I had. And the truth is, I've seen many people ask this question, and I've seen many answers to this question, and I want to share with you today what I think the definitive answer is. There's a Rabbeinu Yoyna in the Shari Tshuva and Shari Gimel. Rabbeinu Yoyna is talking about the hierarchy of the various mitzvahs in the Torah. You know, what's the most lenient of all sort of the violations? You have Durabonans, and then you have mitzvah Saseh, and then you have Alav, and then you have Alav Sheyesh by Kares. There's a hierarchy. So a mitzvah Saseh, if somebody violates a mitzvah Saseh, let's say a person uh, doesn't sit in the sukkah, or doesn't eat matzah, or doesn't put on tefillin. They violated a mitzvah saseh, but the process of tshuva is the most lenient of any of the violations, because the Gemara says in, in Yuma, that if you just do tshuva, you're immediately forgiven for failure to fulfill a mitzvah saseh. So mitzvah saseh is considered ranked less than a lav. A lav is considered more chamur than an asay. But still, Rabbeinu Yoyna says, even though an asay is very lenient, the greatest arenas of achievement and closeness to HaKadosh Baruch Hu come through what he calls Ma'lois Ho'el Yoynois. Ma'lois Ho'el Yoynois. Great attributes. Even though an Asay is lenient, the greatest of all attributes are in Mitzvah Sasei. Now I want to tell you some of the Mitzvah Sasei that Rabbeinu Yoynois lists, and they're not specific Mitzvahs, he calls them Ma'lois Ho'el Yoynois, like areas of Avodah Sashem. And I think there's a reason why Rabbeinu Yoyna put it in a specific order. And I think if we know that every word of the Rishonim, we have a right to question and to analyze and to weigh why did a Rishon pick this word, why did he say it in this formula. If I were to ask you, what are the two most important mitzvahs in the Torah? What would you say? What are the two most important mitzvahs in the Torah? 
So you, how could you ask such a question? It says in Pirkei Avais, have a zahir be mitzvah kala ke You have to be careful in a small mitzvah like a great mitzvah. How could you ask what are the two most important mitzvahs in the Torah? But there are. There are two most important mitzvahs in the Torah. This is something the Chafetz Chaim writes about in his Sfarim in many, 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 many places. The Chafetz Chaim identifies the two most important mitzvahs in the Torah. And he starts off as follows. There's a Gemara in Shabbos that a child came into the base Medrash and they darshined the Aleph Beis. Aleph Beis, Gimel Dalet, not a Shweki song, okay? Aleph Beis, Aleph Bina, learn Taira. Gimel Dalet, Gemoel Dalem, Hey Vav, the name of Hashem. Says the Gemara, Aleph Beis, learn Taira. Gimel Dalet, do Chesed. Hey Vav, God will be with you. Says the Chavetz Chaim, from this Gemara we learn that the two Ikarim in Avodah Hashem, the meat and potatoes of Avodah Hashem, the two main mitzvahs, and certainly all mitzvahs are valuable and important, and we cannot treat lightly any mitzvah, but if you w- would want to pinpoint the meat and potatoes of Judaism, learn Torah number one, Gemal Dalid number two. Says the Chavetz Chaim, throughout Shas, every time Chazal talk about Tzachar, it's Kol HaOisek Ba Torah Uvegemilos Chasadim. Torah and Chesed go together in Shas. I won't bore you in at least ten places where it says, There are at least ten places in Shas where it groups together Torah and Chesed. Those are the two Ikarim. I don't think anybody could argue on that. I haven't found anyone who says, No, there's a different mitzvah more important. That's what the Chavetz Chaim writes in many places. So it's interesting to me when Rabbeinu Yoyna lists what he calls Mailas Ho'el Yoynois, number two on the list, Mailas Talmud Torah, Shenemar V'dibartabam. The Mailah of Talmud Torah. Number three on the list, Mailas Leches B'darche Hashem. Doing Chesed, Shenemar V'halach T'bedrachav. That fits into what the Chafetz Chaim is saying. Because number two is Torah, number three is Chesed. I'll give you some of the others. Yerash Shamayim, Rabbeinu Yoyna writes, Avas Hashem, Rabbi Yonah writes, Kedusha, thinking about the Chesed of Hashem. In other words, there are arenas, avenues of Avodah Hashem that are not specific mitzvahs, but are general categories of the service of Hashem. Number two is Torah, number three is Chesed. And what's number one? You ready? The first Milo Hel of Mitzvah Saseh says Rabbi Yonah, Malois. Habechira, the Maila of Bechira. And the question is, what is this man talking about? Malas Habechira? Bechira is not even a mitzvah in the Torah. What do you mean, Malas Habechira? There's no mitzvah in the Torah. Free choice? Free choice is a concept. Free choice is one of the 13 principles of faith. I remember I was once giving a shir, and uh, there's a guy there who was in his 80s. And I, I said, Who believes? that a person has free choice to do a mitzvah or not. And he says, um, no, I don't believe that. I believe that God decides whether we do mitzvahs. I said, Rabbi, you're 80 years old, but you haven't been Jewish until today, because that's Christianity. We don't believe that. <laughs> we believe everybody has the freedom to choose to do the right thing or to do the wrong thing. But that's not a mitzvah, that's a concept. That's a hashkafa. It's not a mitzvah in the Torah, free choice. None of the Moine HaMitzvahs list free choice as one of the 613 mitzvahs. And yet, Rabbeinu Yoyno learns, not only is free choice a mitzvah, it's number one on the list of Mailas Ho'el Yoynois. So first of all, we're certainly entitled to ask, what is the Maila of Bechira? And number two, why is it number one on the list of Rabbeinu Yoyno? So I want to present to you today, and I've seen you could look in the Mepharshim on Shari Tshuva, I've seen half a dozen pshatim in this. But I'm going to tell you what I consider the definitive pshat, and the reason why I think it's a definitive pshat is because I found in another sefer of Rabbeinu Yoyna where he says pshat in the Shari Tshuva. Now, let me ask you the following question. This is a very interesting question. You know, in, in uh, Yeshiva Chavetz Chaim uh, network, we believe very strongly that you have to know the difference between a Tana, a Moira, a Gain, a Rishain, and an Achrain. 
right? You have to know the hierarchy. You can't ask a kasha from a Gemara onto a Mishnah. You can't ask a kasha from an Achran onto a Rishon. Each level of Chacham has a higher standing. If I were to ask you the following question, but I want you to think real. What made a Rishon a Rishon as opposed to an Achrein? In what way were Rishonim greater than Achreinim? Meaning, pinpoint the difference. What made a Rishon greater than an Achrein? What did they have in them that was on a higher madrega than an Achrein? In other words, I know everything. I know they were bigger Yerei Shamayim. They were bigger Balei Midois. They were bigger, they were more Mizdabeg Ta'kadosh Baruch They were bigger Lamdanim. But what caused that a Rishon should be greater than an Achrein? That a Tana should be greater than an Amoira? That an Amoira should be greater than a Goin? What was it? In other words, pinpoint the Nakuda that made one level greater than the next. What would you say? In other words, why was Rashi greater than Echves, uh, Rebbe Kiva Eger? What made Rashi more than Rebbe Kiva Eger? Time. Time. Maybe, maybe Rashi, I think most people would have said Rashi was earlier. Rashi was closer to Har Sinai. So I'm going to share with you, not my own thought, Rabbi Yerucham, Rabbi Yerucham Levavitz in the Sefer Das Tairo Moser. Rabbi Yerucham says, Mamish Adavar Nifla, an incredible thing. He says, if you look around the world and you look in any area in life, any discipline, Business, finance, medicine, Tyra, anything. What gives a person success? What is the key ingredient to success? Who is successful? People who are smarter? It's not true. People who are smarter are not necessarily more successful than people who are not as smart. People who are disciplined? People who, what is it? What is the key, the central ingredient to success? There, there are many ingredients, but what is the point? <coughs> Says Rabbi Rocham, one word. It's probably a word we never heard of. Yazama. Yud, Zayin, Memhe. Yazama. What does Yazama mean? Ambition. That people who are ambitious, people who have dreams, people who have big aspirations will tend to be more successful than others. It's not a matter of your independent talents. It doesn't matter how smart you are. It doesn't matter how capable you are. It doesn't matter. The most important ingredient is what is your dream in life? If you see somebody successful in life, says Rabbi Rucham, you know that he dreams big. And if you see somebody sort of floundering, he doesn't have big aspirations. Not just in Tyra, in any area in life. Says Rabbi Yerucham something, you know, you could spend nights thinking about what this means. If you want to know the difference between a Rishon and an Achroin, the Rishonim had bigger ambitions and aspirations to serve Hashem than Achroinim did. Tanoim had bigger dreams of getting closer to HaKadosh Baruch Hu than the Amoram. Now why that's the case, it could be because they were closer to Sinai. But if you would pinpoint, if you want to pinpoint the Nukuda between the various levels of the Masoira, Yazama, says Rabbi Rucham. Rabbi Rucham quotes Ramban. Ramban writes, Yeah, we're good? Good? Rabbi Rucham quotes Ramban in Parshas Kisisa. Moshe Rabbeinu comes to Kla Yisrael. They had just come out of Mitzrayim. What do you think they're doing in Mitzrayim? You think they, they were talented? You think they had skill in Mitzrayim? They were, they were building pyramids. That means they were taking dirt and they were basically construction workers. You know, construction workers, they're like uh, Michelangelo, they, they don't have talent. They, they take dirt, they mix it with water, they're grub, they're, they're dirty, and they, they made these big blocks, and that's all they knew how to do. So Moshe says, I have a great idea, we need to make a house for God. So the Jews said, great, we're, we're builders. So Moshe said, no, it's going to be a little different. It's not going to be like the pyramids. It's going to be the most intricate design the most um, complex manner of construction. You're going to make a menorah, it's going to be so detailed that the whole menorah has to be made out of one slab of gold. You're going you're to weave tapestries that are almost not humanly possible to create, where the image on one side is going to be the opposite of what it is on the other side. So they asked Moshe, Moshe Rabbeinu, how in the world are we going to do this? You know, Michelangelo had to prepare... 
25 years before he was able to paint the ceilings and the, and the various buildings that he, he did. How are we going to do this? What does the Torah write? What does the Torah write about who made the Mishkan? What does the Torah write about who, in fact, in the end, made the Mishkan? The Torah says, you know who came forward to build the Mishkan? Kol ish asher nesa'i libay. Any man whose heart carried him. Any person whose heart carried him, whose heart inspired him. It's interesting. When it talked about the people who donated to the Mishkan, it doesn't use the language, Kol ish asher nesa'i libay. It says, V'chol ish asher nadva libay. It says, anybody who is generous. Meaning, that who gave the money to the Mishkan? The generous people. But who built the Mishkan? Who constructed the Mishkan? The Pasuk says, Kal ish asher libay. Anyone whose heart inspired him. It says Ramban, you're dealing with people who had no capability, who had no talent, who were untrained, who were never practiced, and they came forward to Moshe Rabbeinu and they said, Moshe, I don't know how we're going to do it. I don't know if it's possible for us to do it. But our hearts are so inspired, we have so much aspiration to accomplish for HaKadosh Baruch Hu. We're so infused with the desire to accomplish for you that we're going to do it. Ramban quotes the Pasuk, Vayigba liboy bedarche Hashem. Their hearts were elevated in the ways of God. Their hearts were elevated in the ways of Hashem. Says Ramban, that if a person has the desire and aspiration to accomplish something, they are able to accomplish more than their capabilities. So and, and that means, in fact, you could have somebody who doesn't really have the talent and doesn't really have the intellectual power. And he could look at the shelf and he could say, you know what? One day, I want to know the Torah. He can't even read a page of Gemara now. But a person could look at the Torah and say, one day, I'm going to know it I'm going to know it clearly, I'm going to know it thoroughly, I'm going to know halacha, I'm going to be Yari Shamayim. Right now, a, a person is on a very low level. But the Ramban tells us a principle that if a person is inspired in the ways of Hashem and has dreams in the way of Hashem, you could actually elevate yourself above and beyond your capabilities. That's how they built the Mishkan. They couldn't build the Mishkan. They didn't have the talent to build the Mishkan. They didn't have the know-how to build the Mishkan. But they were able to build it because they wanted to build it. it says Ramban, if you want to do something, you will do it. If you don't want to do it, it will never happen. But if you want to, you could accomplish more than your own capabilities. I want to share with you a Rabbeinu Yoyna in the end of Shari Avodah. Now in the Yeshiva, they learn Shari Avodah, the first page. <laughs> There's a famous passage that Rabbi Yoyna writes in the beginning. From there on, it's very difficult reading. But towards the end of the Sefer, Rabbi Yoyna opens up an uh, avenue of Avodah Hashem that not only people don't, are not aware of, but we're going to see that it's so important, it could be the most important mitzvah in the whole Torah. I want to read to you Rabbi Yoyna. Rabbi Yoyna says, in the Shari Avoida, Perek Mem Tes. If you ever get a hold of it, chapter 49. Rabbi Yoyna writes, Hachai yitein alibai. Every living person should think and pay attention. Yasim kol megam masoy lavoidas barei tamid. To place his focus to serve Hashem at all times. V'chol avavoy, uv'chol nafshoy, uv'chol ma'oidoy. Kedei lahasig mala kemalas hagdoy l'mashar ba'aratz. To be able to achieve the levels of the greatest people who ever lived. Avraham, Yitzchak, Yaakov, Moshe, Aaron, David, Hashem. So here we have it. Rabbi Yonah is writing that when you wake up in the morning, you know, you wash Negevaser, and today you say, today I'm going to try to be like Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. Well, that's what the Tanah Dvel Yo says. Chayiv Adam Loimar, Masai Yagi Masai L'Masai Avoisai. Says Rabbi Yoyna, they also only did what they were able to do. So we should do as much as we can. Then says Rabbi Yoyna as follows. Uvachol Yoyim V'Yoyim Yosef Oymetz. Every day strengthen yourself. L'Hizchazek. V'Lalois Mimida Lamida U'Mimadrega Lamadrega. Strengthen yourself to go up from one trade to the other, from one level to the other. 
V'yachmoid, desire. V'yichsoif lahasig ba'avoida ma'she'in yodoi ma'seges. Desire levels that you're not able to achieve. Not desire levels that you could achieve. Desire levels you're not able to achieve. V'yivchar bedarkam, choose that path. You wake up in the morning, today, I want to be like Reb Chaim Knievsky. It's a joke. You're going to be like Reb Chaim Knievsky. What are you going to do? You're going to learn for seven hours and review like 10% of Kala Torah Kula? I'm not saying I'm going to. I want to. I'm not saying I'm going to. I want to. I'm boicher. I choose that. Okay. Says Rabbi Nuyoni, Ve'al ha-bechira belvad yekabel schar. Just for choosing it, you'll be rewarded. Meaning, if I wake up in the morning and say, I want to be like the God al-Hadar, no, I'm not saying you have to be like the, but I want to, if I could. You'll go up to Shemayim, and you and the God al-Hadar will get the same reward. Why? Because you can't do more than you could do. Ki ha-bechira mitzvah there's a mitzvah in the Torah to choose. Shenemar uvacharto b'chayim. Rabbeinu Yoyna has just identified for us a new mitzvah in the Torah. The Rambam doesn't list it. The Ramban doesn't list it. The Smag doesn't list it. Rav Sadi Yagoyin doesn't list it. The Bahag doesn't list it. Rabbeinu Yoyna learns it's one of the 613 mitzvahs. Bechira. What's Bechira? I wake up in the morning. I wish I could learn today with Hasmada. I wish I could daven today with a clear head, with the veikos. I wish I could do chesed. I wish I could work on my midos. We'll all try our best. But the first step is, we're not talking today. I'm not here to tell you what you should be. I'm here to tell you what you should want to be. We'll get to what you should be and what you could. We're talking about what you should desire to be, what you should aspire to be. Says Rabbi Yonah, of course you'll get credit for it. Because the Gemara says in Kedushin, somebody wants to do a mitzvah, and is not able to, is rewarded as if they did the mitzvah. According to Rabbi Yoyna, there's a mitzvah in the Torah to want to be on the level of Avraham, Yitzchak, and Yaakov. You, you should, but I'll never get there. But at least you need to want to get there. And if you want it and you never get there, in Shamayim you'll be rewarded that way. Which mitzvah is that? That's the mitzvah of Bechira. I never heard of Bechira. It's a mitzvah to aspire. I would maintain that according to Rabbi Yoyna, not only is it a mitzvah, it's the most important mitzvah in the Torah. Because if you look how Rabbi Yoyna lists the mitzvah sase in the Milo Salal Yoynas, after number two Talmud Torah, excuse me, before number two Talmud Torah, and before number three Gemilas Chasadim, the very first Milo Hel Yoyna is mitzvah habachira. Because it comes before anything. Because as Rabbi Yisrael Salanter said, his whole life he wanted to be like the Vilna Gain. So at least he became Rabbi Yisrael Salanter. But if you just aspire to be this much, you'll only be this great. The first thing a person needs to decide when they embark on their path of Avedu Hashem is what do I want to be in life? Who do I want to become? What do I want to make out of myself? If a person aspires for mediocrity, they won't get too far. If a person aspires for the height, for the sun, they got a shot at making the moon. You know, you think about it, you know how many Jews are in the world today? How many Jews do you think are in the world today? 15 million? About 12 million Jews. You have about 6 million Jews in Eretz Israel. You have about 5.5 million Jews in America. And then uh, everywhere else, uh, a little bit. You know that besides Eretz Yisrael, there's only one country in the world with more than a half a million Jews. America. Maybe 50 years ago, there were many countries with over half a million Jews. But Russia is emptied out, and Iraq has emptied out, and Iran has emptied out, and Morocco has emptied out, and Yemen has emptied out, and France is emptying out, and England is under a half a million Jews. So Ruchaim Velazhner says, before Mashiach comes, America is the last stop. In the last 70, 80 years, almost every country has already come to Eretz Yisrael. America is the last stop. 70 years ago, 
most of Kal Yisrael, a good chunk of Kal Yisrael was destroyed. If you think about it, out of these 12 million Jews, how many Jews are observant Jews learning in yeshiva? I don't know, probably uh, tens of thousands. Only tens of thousands. That means after 2,000 years of Golos, the Yibam Hashem has selected, hand-picked, a few people, a few people, to be eligible, to be zoicha, to learn Torah, to do mitzvahs, to sit in yeshiva, and to actually accomplish something for HaKadosh Baruch Hu before the great day of Mashiach comes. So you need to ask yourself, if I'm still here after 2,000 years of Golos, and I could learn Torah, and I could go to yeshiva, so what, what does Rebbe Hashem want me to do? Because Rebbe Hashem, I don't happen to be here in a yeshiva. The Rebbe Hashem cherry-picked you to be here, to be zoicha, to be here, to learn Torah and to do mitzvahs. So what does God want me to do? What does He want me to make of myself? 1946, you ever hear Rabbi Wine? Rabbi Beryl Wine. Very interesting personality. I had the privilege to meet him a few months ago. He's a very multifaceted personality. He's a well-known historian. Yeah, people know he was a Rosh Yeshiva. He was a Rav. He's a movie producer. He's a journalist. He's a multidimensional individual. So in 1946, he talks about he was 11 years old. So think about it. He grew up in Chicago, 1946. Majority of Kali Sol in Europe was destroyed. And a tzaddik was coming to visit Chicago. The name of the tzaddik was uh, not so well known um, in the yeshiva world. His name was Rabbi Isaac Halevi Herzog. He was the first rabbi of Palestine. Um, Rabbi Herzog, he wrote Shal Tzachubas Heichal Yitzchak. And he was a very aristocratic uh, rabbi. He wore a top hat, he had a silver cane, and he would walk around with a Tanakh in his hands. And he was coming to visit the Skolke Yeshiva in Chicago. And Rabbi Wine's father told him, Beryl, let's go, we're going to go visit the, the Rav. The Rav is coming from, uh, from Israel. And Rav Herzog uh, came from, uh, he was born in Ireland, so he spoke with a, a, an accent, uh, it's called an Irish brog. And about 200 Bachram came to the Yeshiva, all the Balabatim came to the Yeshiva. And he gave a pilpul for 45 minutes in Yiddish. And when he was finished, Rav Herzog said, and now I want to have a word with the boys, with the young Bachram. And Rav Herzog became very overcome with emotion. He said, I want you to know where I'm coming from. I'm coming from Rome. I just had audience with the Pope. Pope Pius. I guess it's a Lushen of Sagi Nahar. Pope Pius. And I had with me a list of 10,000 names of Jewish boys and girls who their parents delivered them to monasteries, to homes of Christians, because as the war was coming, as Hitler was marching through Europe, Parents realized they would never see their children again, so they gave their young babies to Christian monasteries, to Christian families, to care for them, hoping one day they would get them back. And now, said Rav Herzog, I have a list of 10,000 Jewish boys and girls that are in the hands of Christians. He said, Pope, give us back the children. I have their names. I have their addresses. They're ours. And the Pope reads the list. He says, I will not give back even one child. The law in Christianity is once a child is baptized, he can never return to Judaism. All these 10,000 Jews, these Yiddish Kindalach were baptized, they are not coming back. And he threw Rav Herzog out and he slammed the door. Now I happen to have heard this story not only from Rabbi Beryl Wine, my grandfather, he should live and be well, who is a survivor of Auschwitz and is now 103 years old, Hashem Yarech Yomav, told me and writes in his memoirs that he met Rav Herzog in Europe in the DP camps and Rav Herzog told him that the Pope slammed the door on his face. By the way, my grandfather told me that Rav Herzog went into the Pope in the early 40s when the Jews were being gassed to death asking the Pope to put a stop to the gas chambers and he was thrown out of the Vatican. Whereupon Rav Herzog tells this to the boys that these 10,000 boys and girls are lost forever and he breaks down on the podium crying. This great tzaddik, his head is down on the podium, he's crying, crying, crying. He raises his head, says Rabbi Wine, his, head, his face is beat red. 
There are tears in his eyes. He says, there's nothing I could do for these 10,000 children. But you young men, what are you going to do for the future of the Jewish people? These 10,000 boys are lost forever. But you're still here. You're still with us. You're still part of Klal Yisrael. You've been selected to be from the She'eris Yisrael. So what are you going to do with yourself? And Rabbi Wein says, we lined up, we gave Shkoyach to Rav Herzog, and he looked each one of us in the eye. He said, you heard what I said. Remember what I told you. What are you going to do for the future of Kal Yisrael? And Rabbi Wein says, he's still writing it. I mean, he must be in his high 80s now. He just came out with another book. Every time he's tired. Every time he wants to throw in the towel. You know, if you're a rabbi, those days are, uh, are frequent. Every time he gets weary, every time he says, oh, forget it already. He's haunted by the cry of Rav Herzog. What are you going to do for the future of the Jewish people? And this is what Rabbi Yonah is telling us. There's a mitzvah to learn. That's what we come to yeshiva for. There's a mitzvah to do chesed. There's a mitzvah of Yerashamayim. But there's something that precedes everything. And that is the mitzvah of Bechira. The mitzvah of asking ourselves, what, I, what do I want to do with my life? What do I want to become? What do I want to accomplish in this world? This is the mitzvah of Bechar to Bechayim. But we know Habalataher Messiah Oisai. That if we put our best foot forward, if we're able to dedicate ourselves, especially during this time of our lives, the Yibam Shalom will give us all siyata deshmaya, and everyone according to their level and according to their capabilities. If they have dreams and aspirations to accomplish for HaKadosh Baruch Hu, the Yibam Shalom will give all of us siyata deshmaya, and we should all be zoicha to continue to be successful in all of our endeavors. And the Yibam Shalom should give us siyata deshmaya, lahagdil tayra uladira. Shkayach. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.